go ahead and start um, Shopify, Shopify Learning. Install some stiff npm install. Wait, init. stuff that I needed to do. Oh, and the store is Shopify. Okay. I was like, wait, it's not in here. The documentation's wrong. No, it's here. Enable private app development.
Jack says to read and write. Yeah, read and write. So now we do the fun private stuff really quickly inside of the um. because I didn't install it. I didn't install it. Ah. I was sitting here like, why didn't it install? And it's because I literally just, in, I just did an NPM uh, init and didn't do anything else. So the package didn't actually download. So the goal for this is to learn how the Shopify themes work. Um, I've actually created a Shopify site for someone, um, like sort of got it up and everything, but Shopify is fairly hands-on. It's like, uh, it's similar to Squarespace. I think Squarespace is cheaper though. I think, uh, Shopify is a bit bigger, but, um, with Shopify, you can make themes just like you can in Squarespace. So I wanted to make a theme. I want to be able to make themes for clients in Shopify. So that's why I'm learning this right now. And um, the goal is just to maybe just, hmm. There was a storefront, I this the storefront front end that I saw. Let me get this away from my mouth so it's not so loud. There was a storefront that I saw. I was on Instagram and I saw it and I was like, I really like the way that this looks. And I was just like, wait a second, what if I recreate it? Um, just to show that I can create something like this. Uh, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'll have this, I'll create the back end, I guess, not the back end. I'll create the front end at some point, but I need to learn how the themes work, how liquid works. So I can actually create themes for clients. So that's the goal. The goal is just to make uh, the themes. But you can also use Shopify as a back end. Um, I watched the video just before starting the stream. And um, you can actually use it as a uh, back end. So, you know, you can use your own language that you want to create the front end, like React or um, 
Angular, Vue, or just vanilla HTML and JS for some whatever particular reason um, or whatever language you want to use. So uh, yeah, let's see if theme works this time. It didn't work. Hold on. Do I have to restart the? Uh, Oh, maybe you have to make it global because it's not. I mean, I did it in the folder, so it should work. Yeah, that didn't work. Um, so I installed it as a package. to stream for a little bit you know an hour or so at least um, that still doesn't work okay so we can't use the npm package it's a, it, npm can be weird sometimes with global packages I've learned I get Shopify and Spotify messed up in my brain often. They like swap around. Uh, so, okay, so I, inst I have to install Kit via chocolatey on Windows. I do want to run the script. Yep. Just gonna let that install, and I'm going to set up the string that I'm going to use to just download or um, the quick start the um, theme to get the basic theme. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, and it's got my password, so. Uh, keeping it off the screen for the time being. I don't know why they have a command like that that makes you use your password in plain text. I wish they had something like um, uh, Heroku and Varcel do this thing where um, you can actually log in to your browser instead of uh, putting in a password into your terminal, which is potentially more secure than what I'm attempting to do right now, but that is okay. Ah, it works, nice. Uh, 
Oh, I have to put the password in for the store. Oh, you... wait, wait, wait. And, um, yeah, ho eventually, you know, I want my job to be... To just be making stuff, you know, or solving problems with code and design. I like designing, too. Password again. Let me see what I'm doing wrong. So I think I'm going to quickly design a thumbnail because right now just looking at VS Code is kind of boring. Um, so I might pop something open in Figma. Get that going. Mm -hmm. Alright, I can take out chat from here. Insert on accident. Alright, so I'm gonna try the API key now and see if that works. That didn't work either. Uh huh. any documentation for the commands so new
found it. Okay, so instead of it being your store's password, like the password you use, oh, there's like three passwords. It's so interesting. So there's a password you get with your personal uh, Shopify account. There's an account that you get for your store that have access to your store. And then there's a password that's created when you're making themes, I think. So there's, there we go. Now files are populating. That is fascinating. I didn't think it would be um, seemingly that complicated, uh, but we are in now. So that finished and we can get started. I have a video open um, where it's just theme, uh, theme programming for beginners. It's a crash course that's about an hour long. Before we do that, I am going to go ahead and make a Figma quick sketch for the thumbnail because I want a little, a little cool little thing. But I need a screenshot of the... Oh yeah, I probably don't have it on here. That means I have to go grab it right here. And then we go to Figma. Yeah, we'll just do it on on my laptop. Um, if anyone's watching this, I have a lot of influences for the stuff that I want to do on this channel, and I almost have a hundred connections on LinkedIn. Woo! Um, like dummy codes is definitely a big inspiration devin crawford a little bit of michael reeves um kel uh let me get their name because i was watching them oh the google chrome app uh kel lauren is an inspiration i like their design i really i'm a big design person um yeah did I use 20? I don't know if I used 20 for. Oh, I have to open up another Figma window to grab a logo real quick. And I'm gonna make the text a bit bigger. And not Roboto. a little bit and then let me grab the logo and the music is let me put the link that I have for the music just in case people are, are curious Fi hip hop. Little bit more. 
good on padding. It looks good on padding. It looks okay. Um, and I think actually what I'm going to do is put a gradient on this top rectangle, actually. Linear. Gradient looks nicer, I think, I think. I might put a logo on it, put the Shopify logo on it later, boy. Um, I think right now it looks pretty decent. DC enough, DC, DC enough. I also today have to probably put in some job applications. Uh, since I graduated from Thankful, um, the next steps is just to, you know, to start actually looking, and you know, it's about the six months from now. So December, January, February, March, April, and then May. But I feel like it might not take that long Yeah, I finished in almost five months. The flex, it's I think mostly because I was speed running the like the first half, and then um, eventually uh, the closer to the end, I left my job. So I spent since like October, the beginning of October, until uh, until I graduated, just basically doing thankful waking up and doing thankful stuff and um i honestly kind of enjoyed it um i like i like being able to to kind of grind it out basically just like that's the only thing you're doing i kind of like just being able to wake up and like all right i know what i'm doing today it's just gonna be uh coding that's kind of fun I updated the thumbnail. Okay, not yet. Also, something just unplugged and plugged, and I don't know where it was. Okay. Change is saved, but the cache needs to clear in order for that to work. I'm pretty sure. So let me hard reset. Yeah, it worked. All right, cool, coolio, coolio. Now I'm gonna turn down the profile a little bit because we're gonna start hearing the, the video for Shopify. I just realized that the desktop audio was crazy loud. I'm going to expand this out you'll see that we have much less code in here. We don't have any sections or snippets and our index file is only 10 lines long, okay? So this is ideal for practice purposes. We don't want to overwhelm ourselves with too much HTML and definitely Liquid and Shopify themes in general can get quite uh, messy and hard to understand when you have so much code and stuff going on so i definitely recommend you start from a starting point like this all right so how this tutorial is going to work is i'm going to basically follow what i wrote here so this is a guide that i have on my website you can find it at christhefreelancer.com slash shopify liquid guide and it's a comprehensive article basically a text course on how to do shopify liquid programming I talk about different styles of objects. I discuss all the objects available, where you can find them, object scope, 
It's a mammoth article that I don't expect you to read in one go, but if you get lost at any point throughout this tutorial, you can come here and read up on a section that you didn't quite understand, or maybe something that you want to use later on. Uh, maybe it's a filter or an object or a tag that you didn't see before, and you can come back here, you know, use control F to find that filter and see what it does, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with pure Shopify liquid without touching any of the store data or theme data. And then we're gonna introduce store data and theme data to show you how you can use Shopify liquid to actually present the store data on the page. Shopify Liquid, of course, is the templating language for Shopify themes, and it allows you to represent what you've got stored in your store into your website, all right? So without incorporating store data, it's pretty useless. But what we're gonna do, just so you get the concepts, is start without any store data and then introduce it. I'm starting to get into the store. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm locked out of the store. Oh, my password. Oh, goodness. Um, is the store password like... Let me go to the admin page again. Is this the password that they're referring to? No, it's not. Oh, what is... What is the password? Try this one. No. Try this one. Token webhook. I did that wrong too many times. Oh, that's the password. Oh my gosh. There's like five passwords. Uh, that's fine. We're learning. This is so when we pass it off to the client, we know what we're doing. We have to fail in order to learn. That's totally okay. I just needed to make sure that everything was good. I think we can now go to the page. Yeah, so we have a little, a fairly generic little theme, which is really nice. And I think it's responsive. Yeah, it's responsive. And I think what I'll do, let me quickly make something so we can see what the page looks like. So we'll just do a window capture. Shop. I think. I don't know what client area is. All right, so we're gonna have this window open to show theme when the time is ready. Um, but I'm also gonna make a little thing on my stream deck so I can hide it, at least we don't need it open. Shopify theme. Let me change the icon. Okay, 
Oh, hi, Elias. What's going on? Oh, my goodness. That was loud. Let me show timestamps. Wow, it's been... It's been like five minutes since you sent that message. I'm sorry, buddy. All right, so I've done a lot of talking so far. Let's actually jump in and write some code, okay? So what I'm gonna do, it doesn't matter what template you do this in, I'm just gonna do the index.liquid template. I'm gonna get rid of all of this code and I'm gonna start with the first basic. Oh, he cleared out the whole index.liquid. We should probably commit this to. Um, oof, we're going to, do we have a git ignore? Git ignore. I can't spell ignore. Node modules. Okay, so it reduces it to a, a way better. And we're just going to go ahead and commit this and call it a net. All right. So he went to layout, went to theme, index, liquid, or wait, hold on now. Like example. It doesn't matter what if I All right, so I've done a lot of talking so far. Let's actually jump in and write some code. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, it doesn't matter what template. Where is index? There we go. You do this in, I'm just gonna do the index.liquid template. I'm gonna get rid of all of this code and I'm gonna start with the first basic example, which is assigning a variable. All right, if you've done any programming in the past, this is a very basic function. So nice, nice, nice. I'm going to create a variable and assign it the value of hello. Okay, so this is obviously gonna be a string variable. So what you can see here is we've got a opening curly brace, a percentage side, we've got our code in here. So we've, we're running the assign tag and we're just doing our variable assignment there. Then when we're done, we close with the percentage sign and the curly brackets. So pretty much all the time you're doing Shopify liquid, this is what a tag looks like, except when you're outputting stuff on the screen, right. in which case you use the double curly braces. And that's what we'll do right now. We are just going to it's, it's like react. assign this variable and then output the variable to the screen. I'm gonna hit save on that. One extra thing I'm gonna do so that we only have what we wrote here on our page is get rid of some of the layout code. So in my theme.liquid file inside the layout folder, I'm gonna get rid of everything except this main tag here with the content for layout. Holy cow. So all of this header content, I'm just gonna delete. He's like, let's delete everything. Right, so now ah. we can view what we've made here by hitting this link here to preview our theme. And I'm gonna open it. Okay, I have to do some a different way. So let me look at how to deploy or preview. So commands, using environments configure, deploy, so theme deploy all right cool so we can go back to the page let's 
see what it looks like. Open it up in a new tab so it stays in the same window. Now when I open up... It's supposed to only have hello. Oh, what language? It's Liquid. It's um Shopify's language. It's like it's like Ruby, I think. Um, and it's also like React. Everything's in plain text. Um, I will have to change the password somehow later. Why is everything in plain text? Sure, I could change something on here, or I can delete the app. That also works. And I feel like it should commit the config to the git ignore, but I don't know. Most of coding is just reading documentation. Configure theme. So we've done that. We've created a new theme. I've hit deploy, but it's not showing up yet. So we have to figure out what's going on. This is like WordPress. Oh my god, I'm having WordPress flashbacks and like Tumblr flashbacks where there's like it says uh, like customized, but it's only in reference to like something else. It's so weird. I 
also changed the theme name, I'm sure. At least I thought I did. Um, let me check that out. Right, so I found it. I found the theme. You have to set it. The current theme when I started the store is different. Okay, cool. So, I can now... So according to the instruction from the video, we just needed to clear out the theme and everything. So we are good there and we're gonna go ahead and continue. Up the theme, you can see it says hello. So as you saw, we assigned a string to a variable and then we output it on the screen. This is right. very basic Shopify liquid. It's like React. Actually, it's I like think you. we should have them it's side by beautiful. side. So what I'm going to do is beautiful. take this out of full screen. Let me make this window something else. with our preview. And then we can place them side by side on Mac like this. There we go. All right, cool. So here we have our code and we have our output. So we've created our own string variable. This could easily be a number <laughs> as well. So let's just say the variable is five. Refresh the page. You can see it's five, okay? Um, we can perform math on that variable. So what we can do inside our output tag here is run a filter. So in Shopify Liquid, we have three types of syntax. We have tags, which tags. you can see here. We have objects, which you'll see when we introduce store data. Cool. And we have filters. Filters are a piece of syntax that is pretty unique to Shopify Liquid. So it might take you a little bit of time to get your head around it. But once you do, you'll find that they're very simple to use. So in this example, we could filter this value by many different things. So seeming it's a number, what we could do is add to it. So in Shopify Liquid, as I mentioned, it's not a programming too, language, so we can't really actually cool. do something like this. What we'd have to do is use a filter, and a filter always starts with a pipe symbol. So we put in the pipe, and then we use the filter name, which is plus, and then if the filter takes a parameter, we put in a colon, and then we put that parameter after it. So now if I hit save, and I refresh over here, you'll see we have the number 10. So five plus five the number gets assigned to the variable and the variable gets outputted. We can also put the filter directly on the output tag. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make a goal. I'm starting to think of like questions I have for myself. Um, Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. So I need to figure out handoff for client um, because I feel like most people, if they want a Shopify site, if they already have one, they've in, they're interested in Shopify, then um, how would I hand it off to them? Because I can still have access. And I know that some people are just like, once the, the site is finished, like that's it. They don't really, you know, it's just more or less a CMS at that point. But like, I'm sure some people um, might want extra stuff. I don't know. I, I've learned that you can like, some, since some people just want the site and when that's done, it's done. And it's just, as long as it was working consistently before launch, like you're good to go. You don't have to work on the site anymore. But some people might want maintenance. So like you can have an account still, but handoff for client is something I want to know. Um, so I just have to learn how accounts work. So we can agree on like, hey, the site's finished. If you don't want me to have access anymore, here you're the main admin now you you can make changes to it i'm good and then it's a piece out um shopify costs 29 dollars per month and that's not even you know uh transaction charges 
um, but Shopify is I don't know there's so many ways you can do e-commerce so I don't know I know nothing I know nothing <laughs> it's just Shopify is not the most accessible way of getting started with a store um, but a lot of people like Shopify I honestly I like Shopify I just it's a bit pricier uh, 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 pricing I'm looking up the pricing right now yeah basic Shopify is $29 and then it's $79 and then it's $299 for advanced Shopify a month and Set up your store, pick a plan later. I don't know how the free trial works. I sh I'm just trying to I have to figure out if I were to do an e if somebody was like, I want to make a store for something, we just have to figure out what they would need out of it and then start from there. But I Shopify is fairly popular and WordPress is fairly popular. I think I'm going to do some stuff with WordPress too because WooCommerce is, is really good. Um, I mean, I've used it and you can connect it with other stuff and it works and it's great. But I also really like liquid and Such. big commerce uses liquid or not big commerce, big hardware. And now when we refresh the page, we get the exact same result. Cool. So we've now seen tags and filters. We'll do a few more filters later in this tutorial. Um, but the next thing to cover will be arrays. Now arrays are interesting in Shopify liquid. You can't actually create an array without creating a string first. So how array creation works in Shopify liquid is you create a string with all the values you want for those different items in your array and you separate them by some delimiting value. Anyway, that's probably not going to make any sense unless I actually show you. So let's jump right into it now. So I'm going to rename the variable to array. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a string and I'm going to put in the list with a delimiting value. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the delimiting value in or delimiting character in this case is this comma here. Okay. So obviously if I hit save, and I refresh the page over here, you'll see we just get the explicit string, explicit string, which is just one, two, three, four, five, six, with commas separating it. But what I can do here is put in an extra assign statement to change this to an array. And the way we do that is by the split filter. So what I'm gonna do is rename this to array string and to get that array string to be converted into an array I'm going to take that array string and use the split filter and so the split filter is just the word split with the parameter of the delimiting character or delimiting set of characters okay so we're going to split by comma and then if we output the array it just actually loops through and outputs all the values but of course that doesn't make a lot of sense for our purposes. So let's use a more practical example and let's show you how to actually use that array in a loop. Okay. So I'm going to put an array of names instead, Bob, Denise, Clinton, Michael. All right. So just whatever names came to me first. All right. So now what I'm going to do is introduce what's called a for loop. All right, so how we do a for loop, for loops exist in pretty much every programming language. Uh, we're just going to loop through a bunch of values in an array and output them to the screen. Okay, so how we do that in Shopify Liquid is for 
and then we specify what the individual item should be called we can specify whatever so i'm going to say name in array and that's going to take every name from the array i like to end my loop straight away so i don't forget using end for and then inside here let's create a list so I'm going to introduce some HTML now. Oh my goodness, now. this is so... Unordered list this is crazy because here. like I was using it and before. Inside with the, the big cartel. Block, I'm going to put in a list item and simply output the name. I'm going to hit save. And now we should see an unordered list of our names when we refresh the page over here. And there you go. Now we've created an array of strings and we're looping through them. Now again, not a very practical example, but I want to show you how we would incorporate an if statement. So yeah, in Shopify yeah. Liquid, you're going to be using for loops quite a lot. So usually you would use them to loop through certain objects, <coughs> like Ooh. maybe it's blog posts or products in your store. Have I been muted In this the whole instance, time? we just created our own array and looped through it, which... I'm checking to make sure that I wasn't muted. I mean, no? Okay, B bless. Oh God, I was just like, oh, I was muted. And also I'm gonna lower my mic volume. So when I scream, it's it's fine to do, but most of the time you're gonna be using your store data in the form of objects to loop through. The other thing you might wanna do when you're looping through these objects is check for certain things before you output Great them validation. to the screen or have different content show up based on certain values. And you do an for index? that, we would use an if statement. So in this particular example, it's not gonna be a very practical example, but I'm gonna show you anyway. We're gonna open up an if statement here by using the if tag. And I'm going to say if name dot size, which is an attribute that comes in Shopify Liquid for determining the size of an array or a string. When used on a string, it'll tell us the size in number of characters. And what I'm gonna do is filter when size is less than four, then we're gonna show the name. Okay, a bit of indenting an, here. An now when I hit save, quick. we will only get and Bob and showing up. So what's happening here is we're looping through the names in our array of names that we created up here. Then once we're inside a iteration of that loop, we're gonna check if the length of that string is less than four. And if so, we're gonna output the name inside our list. If not, there is no else statement, so it just doesn't get shown. Now at this point, we've pretty much hit the limitation of programming you can do in Shopify Liquid with we okay if name size is less than four print the name and if and then n4 on ordered list the li should still print bob oh there's no there's space is a the space is what's making it do that i see I see, I see, I see. Okay. Let's see what happens now. It's Bob. <clears throat> I need a better way to show the screen. I'll think about that for future stuff. Let me pull up. Split screen OBS. without actually using any store data. So now it's time to actually bring in the third part of syntax within Shopify Liquid, which is objects. Object time. We're about 16 so minutes instead in. instead of cycling through a list of names that we created, what if instead we loop through products within our store? So just a caveat before we do this, you will actually need some store data and what I mean by that is you actually need to insert some products 
inside your store for you to actually access them. But as long as you have products within your store, we can go ahead. Uh, let me check. I don't think I have any products in the store. Yep, let me just make some faux ones. A shirt, a shirt, price a hundred dollars. This is a physical product. Yup, a shirt. Product type, add a shirt. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about this this site, recreating this site. I'm actually really excited about it. I'll design it and put it together um, as just like a, a way of showing that I can do that. And then once I do that, I'll move on. No. I also have to make a boilerplate for Shopify stuff. Boilerplate slash workflow for Shopify. So when a client wants to use Shopify specifically, or I talk to the client and they are like, yeah, I think I want to go ahead and do Shopify after just talking about options. Um, I can just go ahead and I know exactly what the workflow is going to be like. Um, and then, you know, after figuring out design, I know basically about how long it's going to take and the process because liquid is, um, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Also I'm comfortable. I don't use it all the time. Um, but yeah, I think we'll be good on that. So I added a shirt, so now your product information. So we're probably gonna iterate over the products, I'm sure. And actually display them on the screen using Shopify Liquid, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a sign again to create a variable which is going to reference an object. And the object I'm gonna reference in this instance is a collection. So I'm going to call it collection and what I can do is I can access a particular collection through the global collections object okay global so this is our first global object that we're looking at collections and then inside that collection I can specify the what's called handle of a, a particular collection and then now I will have access to that collection as long as i've named that correctly i'm pretty sure i have a featured collection featured collection i do not have a featured collection so let me go ahead and make that That's the only condition. So I'm making a con uh, collection on the back end, and then I can go ahead and I just titled it. I just titled it collection, but I don't know if you, if I can make it featured. I'm not exactly sure how it works. Make collections available, unavailable. No say. <laughs> I, I I do not know. All right, so let's just quickly move over to the article, look up collection or collections and have a little bit of a read. Okay, so right here in my article, I have a list of all the global objects. And as it says here, the following objects are available from wherever inside your theme. Global okay, objects. so this is how you would access products, pages, blog posts, blogs, and collections 
from with anywhere in your theme, okay? So if you're inside anywhere in your theme and you know the name or the handle of a particular collection, you can actually use the collections global. Again, the reference is all here, Shopify liquid guide if you need to follow along. All right, going back to our example here, I'm just going to show you what happens when we try to output an object. So let's- All right, I'm gonna sort of skip ahead in my brain because I'm already just like, I already know what I want right now. So what I want to do is, I know this shouldn't, this shouldn't work. I don't think this should work the way I want it to because I don't think I have a quote unquote featured collection. So let me check this out. Empty drop. I I don't know what that means. So it's kind of right. But what we're going to do is we'll do a for loop for collect in collection. Um, the global object. And then we can do an in for. And what we're going to do is we're just going to print out each object. We could probably do title because it says in the cheat sheet that I have over here that, yeah, there's a title. Yeah, this is what, exactly what I want to do first instead of. Featured homepage. So featured and homepage. Um, I'm kind of curious on like object actually looks like but collection drop collection drop so the collection object I need the handle which I guess it's just like it's its name Featured in front page. I have no clue why it crashed before, but it should be working now. Uh, I apologize for that crash. I'm sure it has to do with something with like the 15,000 uh, Chrome tabs I have open right now. But where we were just a second ago um, was that I just wanted to print out the handle for the objects for the collection so I know what to address them by and and code uh, so after we do this video I'm thinking about just getting started with looking at the theme I want to recreate and we can start doing a little bit of things and that might be the stream for today eventually finishing it posting about it at some point I don't know I don't have a plan I'm just figuring this out as I go along. Um, and this is just like a good opportunity to start betting out the MVP of everything. So we have collections. Ah, oh, interesting. So one way you can figure out the handle because I don't think it's actually listed on like the was it back end i guess is if you hover over the view button on the back end of your store over the collection um you'll see collections forward slash and then the name of the handle for the collection so that works all right let's continue with the tutorial let's try and output the collection here and you'll That's see the cool. words come up collection drop. 
Now in Shopify Liquid, an object, if you just try and output it to the screen, it'll have the type of object and then the word drop after it. Interesting uh, choice of word. I don't know why they called it drop, but if for instance, we instead of targeting a particular collection, use the all products global and targeted a specific product within our store, hit save on that, refresh the page, you'll see we get product drop, okay? So drop basically just means a object in Shopify Liquid. So refreshing the page there, we can see our collection drop again. All right, so a drop is an object. Uh, one of the things that I'm trying to look at is what, all right, so all products, articles, blog. God, I love APIs, I love documentation, oh my goodness. I, like, you just, I get excited about this because, you know, part of the reason why I'm trying to get re-familiar with Liquid is so um, I'm more comfortable skating through it. I'm just like, it's so good when you have good documentation like this. And that's part of the reason why I would, I would probably be like, hey, um, I'm doing this thing. I, or you can, I can do this thing for you. And it's not particularly useful to output a collection to the screen, but when you're debugging and you want to make sure that what you're outputting is a collection, then you can use these output tags to directly try to output the object that you're trying to access in Shopify Liquid. And if it comes up with the type of object and then drop after it, then you know you're at least accessing an object within Shopify Liquid. So to actually get something meaningful from our collection onto our output over here, we can start to grab an attribute off this object. So we've got our collection object here. Maybe we want the name of the collection. So we can use the title attribute, refresh feature. over here, and we can see the name of the collection. So I'm gonna leave that up here. And what I'm gonna do is open up a for loop. So this is a perfect example, probably the most common example of a for loop in Shopify Liquid is looping through a collection of products and outputting products to the screen. So what I'm going to do is name each individual item a product because that's what it is. And I'm going to access the products attribute on the collection object. Then I'm going to end the loop and inside the loop block, Let's just output, actually, let's do what we did before, create an unordered list using some HTML tags here. And then inside, I'm going to have access to product objects. So within this object, it's got an attribute which holds a collection of other objects, which are products. And now if I try to, let's actually just out, try and output the product to the screen see what happens you'll see as we saw before all of these are product objects so if we try to oh i did something wrong uh i think i featured collection it's just called feature okay okay that looks like it should be right oh hey elias and then we have a shirt oh it's because it's still drafted I have to publish the product. So that means if I, we should see object drop once I actually undraft it or what, I guess that's what it's insinuating. Uh, Josh is learning, featured, delete. No, I don't want to delete anything. What are you up to Elias? What's up, what's going on? Set as active. I should probably make one in stock. And <laughs> Product drop, we did it. Yes. 
<laughs> we did it. We did it. All right. So um, let's follow what he was just saying. Just output the product to the screen. We'll just get product drop, which is not very useful. So we have to access an attribute on the object as well. And I think it's either name or title. Let's try title. There we go. So we've got our collection title and then we've got our title of each of our individual products Ooh. and we can expand on this using other data so let's say we want to access the price so you can do product dot price and here you can see we've got numbers coming up after the dash unfortunately or fortunately we, in Shopify format Liquid, it. we have the numbers without any formatting and they actually come through in sense value so we're gonna have to show use me a the... filter here yeah and show there's me the filter, an easy bro. one called the keep writing filter the money filter <laughs> if i hit save on that you'll see all of these numbers now transform into something a lot more human readable is it localized i wonder if it's localized that's also another thing about using instead of building everything from scratch um using these other platforms like uh shopify and, and woocommerce since they're they're fairly vetted and have a larger community of people other than like yourself when you're making your own stuff but like like let's say you want to localize and so let's say you want to put it into another language like german um they have things like that that are able to um do that automatically all right then what we can do to kind of complete this is wrap this all in a link so what we can do is break this up into a link and inside the href attribute we can actually put a link to the product so product dot url if i hit save on that refresh over here now if i click on any so of these you have products, to put it in quotes i will go to the product page interesting you do have to put it in quote oh we have an extra quote oh it deleted both of them um okay that worked show so uh, we did the collect that url and then we get the shirt no image because uh i haven't done anything with it yet so hide that again for that particular product so now that we're actually using real objects and not arrays that we created ourselves it starts to make a lot more sense to use if statements for instance in this example we may not want to show out of stock products so first of all i'm going to check if a product is in stock by putting in another dash see what products here we have in stock by using the available the attribute in the product object refresh the page you'll see we got true for all of these oh okay god bless documentation um, collect dot available. I wonder if there's an extension that allows that just like has the um, objects and everything. That'd be nice. So in the link, it should say false. Uh, it is not available. It should be available. Let me change something on here. Oh. Uh. All right, now if I refresh, it should fix that. Yeah, true. Perfect. We're halfway through this crash course for beginners. Um. I don't, I'm just like, I have so many ideas. So I might need to change the collection. I wonder if I can use the all collection here. 
Yes, okay, so I'm now accessing the All Collection instead of the Featured Collection. And the All Collection is default by Shopify. So it's gonna hold all the items in your Shopify store, all the products within your Shopify store, unless you go in and create your own All Collection, which will override this one, okay? But within any store, you'll always have an All Collection. So this is outputting all the products in my store. And as you can see, I've made this test product here, product with no image and no stock. And this one is the only one with a false value, okay? So that's perfect for an if statement because an if statement looks for true or false. So I'm gonna remove that. And actually, instead of not showing the product at all if it's out of stock, I'm still gonna show it, but I'm just gonna indicate to the user that it's out of stock. So okay, I'm gonna then put you can the if statement in here. Under here. And do. I'm going to put if, if products.available is not true, then we're going to write sold out. And I wanna put some brackets there. Cool. So I'm gonna hit save Else on that. If. Refresh over here. And you can see the one without any stock has. All right. That should definitely, it's not good. If available is not true. My brain, I'm, oh, wait. Oh, it's because I did this wrong. That doesn't. Thank you for lenting. There we go, it fixed it. So it shouldn't say sold out because I actually added stuff to the inventory. So. Yeah. Sold out over here. Okay, now this is an example of where you might want to use the alternative if statement inside Shopify Liquid, which is unless. Okay, so if you're from uh, Ruby programming, you should be familiar with this. Shopify Liquid was actually based off of Ruby, uh, the programming language. Uh, and I think the entire code base is written in Ruby. So here's another one that we can use called unless, unless. which makes sense in this instance because it does the opposite of if. So instead of checking if product available is not true, we can just get rid of that comparison there and say, unless product is available, show sold out. So if product is available, nothing will happen. But if it isn't, then we'll have show, sold out, show on the screen. So refresh the page over here and you see we get the same result. So unless you write less code here, but it might actually make more sense for you to have it written like this, which I think is easier to understand. All right, so now we've learned the basic syntax of Shopify Liquid, and we've now combined that with bringing in some stored data through the use of objects. So of course, stored data is the data that you insert in your Shopify admin. So when you add a new product or you add a new page, that then becomes available to access through your theme by accessing these objects. But what we can also do is add data to our theme through the use of JSON schemas. Jason. So there are two places where we store JSON schemas Jason inside Google. themes. There is the schema for the overall theme, which is here in the config folder, settings underscore schema.json. And then when we create a new section, we can define a schema at the bottom of that section, and then we can kind of sectionize our theme data into different sections of our theme. Okay, so 
The store data, of course, is stored in the back end of Shopify. It's in, you know, databases where we don't have direct access to, but we can access through Liquid and APIs. But the theme data structures are a lot simpler. It's basically just a JSON file, as you can see here. And we can see all of the code for these schemas right in our theme. So that being said, if the theme changes, the theme data changes as well. So this is data that you're going to use specifically within your theme. So I'm just going to move this over a little bit because we don't need it so big and it'd be nice to have more space over here. And what I'm going to do is add another object to this JSON file. So this is our overall schema for the overall theme. Now, before we go in and change it, I just want to show you where these schemas show up. So for the end user or for the person who's actually, you know, adminning the store, where they're going to see this schema data is right here. So we don't actually have any sections at the moment. So we just have this one uh, sidebar over here and we just have checkout settings. So this comes default within Shopify themes. There's always going to be a checkout section here. But what we can do is define our own section. So what I'm going to do here is open up a new object and I'm going to name this uh, colors. Let's use the American. Whoa. All right, my brain just had, a, I was just like, well, I have a question. So like, um, first we're altering, uh, something I don't even know what is, but I guess I can- In spelling to be consistent, oh, and I'm going to add in some settings. So I think I'm I just do gonna be do learning one for now. Well. And for each of our input An settings, uh, well, I'm going to give it a type color picker ID of color. Actually, let's make it more specific and go with link color. And then the label, which will be what's shown in the customizer will be link color. So this is, this is cool. So you can like make custom stuff for a store. So if like, let's say there was something specific, a client needed like one specific thing that they added to their site that they wanted to control over at any given time you can make that and then in the in the cms which is what i'm going to call the gui for the back end i guess i guess um they're able to change it manually just like in tumblr i wait can you do that in tumblr yeah you could do that for themes in tumblr oh tumblr themes uh is the one where you want to use capitals and spaces and we can also define a default value here let's just do a default of black okay so if i've written this correctly when i hit save it should work um unfortunately there's an error and i believe it's because color picker is the wrong type yeah so if i just change it to color then it'll work so two things here, if you don't understand the syntax of JSON, that is probably for another video. I definitely look into JSON. JSON Derulo. Um, local delivery, developer tools. Oh, they have developer tools. That's so cool. Um, bum, 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 bum. Online store themes customize. Here we go. Theme settings, colors, link color. <gasps> it's here. Is there any information on here? Let's put this over here. Link color. That's really cool. You can make like custom stuff, like theme settings. Can you make something here? Can you make something on, huh? I don't know. And also, can I change the name to, from basic to something else? Can you change theme names after you've created them? And I guess like 
Shopify has their own apps and themes platform so you can sell them if you would like. I just have to figure out how to design things. I don't know how to design anything. Listen, once you but I'm like very interested in doing so. Structures work, it's pretty easy. We're inside an array here and then each of these curly brackets is an object. So we've got a secondary object here and then a key value pair, then a key value and the value in this instance is another array with a list of objects inside that, okay? So we're not gonna cover JSON specifically in this lesson. The other thing that might not be familiar to you if you're new to Shopify theme programming is the different things you need to define here. So this is all in the Shopify documentation. I believe the page is called configuring theme settings. And if I just search for color. Oh, I just thought of something time. How long to make a theme and set up store for client. Because one of the things that you're going to want to do when you're making stores for clients and you're making themes, because you can, I mean, you can technically have people just want you to open up a store for them and sort of manage it for them. You can technically do that and you can do whatever you want as a, as a freelancer or as a small agency or agency. Like if you're, if you're the boss, I guess you can, you can do what you want. But, um, if you're doing something where it's like you're making a theme, they have a particular idea for what they want to see with their store, then um, I need a time how long that's going to take. So once you go to a client and they're like, okay, I want to, I want this done. And then you can actually give them an estimate of how long it's going to take because you know, you can, you only know so much about how long it's actually going to take when you're actually taking on a client or you haven't refined your process yet. But um, I'm assuming there's going to be a time where a client comes to me and they're like, yeah, I want to do a Shopify store. And I'm just like, all right, cool. Um, and they have this in mind and I'm like, all right, cool. This is going to take a couple of weeks. It's going to take two weeks. It's going to take three weeks. And I just, I think I need to figure out how long that's going to take. And I think that's, what's going to happen with the project. So what we'll do is I'll make, I'll reproduce this project that I saw. I have to find it and I'll time it because I'll probably stream most of it. And we'll see how long it takes for me to actually make the site a thing. Um, and this is not including if the, the client wants something on top of it, you know, or extra, because that might be something different because luckily a lot of these things have APIs. Oh, I love APIs so much. So you can integrate other stuff into it. So like, let's say they wanted the store as a backend, but they also wanted an application. So, you know, you know, react native, so you can actually target an Android and an iOS app, and you're going to be deploying for your, your client. Um, so it's just like all of this stuff is like good to know and start theorizing because like, I don't know, it's, it's possible and it's become a lot more accessible. I need to figure out how I would deploy for a client. Can you deploy for client? Deploy iOS app for client. Like, can a freelancer and, or an agency? I think, I think the person might have to do that themselves. Like, but no, if someone's coming to you for an application, you are probably going to have to deploy it. For freelance client. Like you can give them the information, but So there is, 
yeah i'm assuming i'm target like for the people that i want to end up working with they are probably like i'm more or less being contracted like i'm like they don't have their own development team they could have design already um but i'm not worried necessarily about like you know creating too many assets if that's not what we're working on or i'm working with the design team um i'm going to be doing all the code stuff and and helping that getting deployed and i know a, people want maintenance over time sometimes but i don't know i feel like they can be hit or miss i know like people just want to be able to change stuff at any time so you're more or less making a platform for people and i like to think about it like that like you're making a tool for them to do what they need to do um if it's a store you're just trying to get out of their way um and let them earn money from their brand or their content and if you're making a blog a blog or portfolio you're making sure that they can be seen um or they have like a business card um but I also want to get clients where like they want to do experimental ways of creating content or maybe not creating content, but distro for content. I think about Gary V and his sort of uh, document, not create philosophy. And like, I want to make code solutions for clients for that. Like, that's what I'm interested in. Like, do you need to figure out how to turn one long stream of your podcast of your like a long form article or a stream into just tons of different content across different platforms i'm super interested in that you can see an example of what we've just written so if we scroll down we can check all the different input types and look at examples so we could even hmm. just let's put in a random text one just to show you how easy this is can throw in another setting right here and it's just going to be completely random just text actually for the id i'm going to change field with the default value of value and this info text of text okay so info is there placeholder default um so the placeholder will come up if we remove the value and you can see there we've got the placeholder text so everything so the id is link color so thing we specified within this setting right here will show up in the customizer and then people who are customizing the theme using the ui can actually change this data and then it gets stored right here in settings underscore data dot json all right so first of all actually i need to bring back that customizer and actually set a color so right now it's just doing the default let's change it to red and hit save on that now what should happen if i refresh my code editor here fortunately i need to go back to full screen there we go now if i go into settings underscore data dot json you can see that the link color has now been stored and that means it is available for us to use globally, probably. I can't seem to within Shopify liquid. Okay, so this was a little bit of a tangent, but it's important to cover because we're actually going to be using this data in Shopify liquid. Just a side note, if you want to learn more about schemas and all the other aspects of I have Shopify to figure out how to access the color. Check out my because I'm assuming it has to do something with this. Will be in the description of this video. But it'd be like cool. So let's we're on move here away from these schemas now and let's we'll just show go like you how to actually access that data yeah. within your feed. So here I'm gonna put a style tag and I can access that color that we just set through the global settings object. Okay, right. settings, color. I believe we called it link color. This is the ID. So yeah, how you reference it, if 
we go back to that schema just briefly Color. the id is the attribute all right so now when we oh i forgot to actually specify color here now when we save the page and refresh it over here unfortunately we've got that issue that sometimes uh, i have to clear it out we can just do fudge uh i can clear cash on this and also let me let me slide uh, that's the the subtitles for the thankful video that i made Just want to do this and squeeze this into that space. Because we're having the issue right now with hard reload. Uh, it, the color didn't change at all. <laughs> um, oh, wait, did I make it black or red? I think I made it red. Times happens in Shopify where it switches to the live theme. So just going to click on preview again, drag this over. And you can see now that all of our links are red. That is the color that we specified in the customizer and that we can clearly see. Let me go back to the customizer. I might not have saved it. Oh, the color didn't save. That's weird. There we go. So I just can't touch anything. Um, I just don't know how this gets updated though. So we need to look that up real quick. Because that might be an issue. Like, I'm just wondering if there's like a command where I can sync. Oh shoot, there's a watch. Okay, cool. This is, what am I looking for? So I'm just looking for a command that allows me to download but yeah let's continue here so if i actually go in and inspect this using my dev tools so i'm going to put the dock down the bottom here you can see that is the exact color here that is stored in this JSON data structure. Okay, so just to finish off on theme data, I wanna show you how we would access it in a particular section. So maybe we wanna put this all in a section and then we can use section data instead of having it in the overall theme settings. So what I'm gonna do is grab all of this, create a new section, Oh, by the way, when I say grab, I mean cut. So it's in my... Okay, so we don't have sections on the um, sections. So we have to make a new section. My clipboard now, but removed from index. I'm going to replace it with a call to a section to get a section on the screen or bring in oh. a section into... 
particular template or layout file we just write the section tag and i'm just going to call this um, random collection again we're not creating a production ready theme here we're just learning liquid so these random names don't really need to make much sense all right random collection And now you can see if we're using the online editor, it actually creates the schema for us. Okay, I'll get rid of these tags and I will paste in my code. All right, so. Okay. I was not paying attention to anything. Random names, a production ready. Um, at these, or place it with a call to a section to get a section on the screen or bring in a section into particular template or layout file we just write the section tag and I'm just going to call this um, random collection again we're not creating a production ready theme here we're just learning liquid so these random names don't really need to make much sense all right random collection And now you can see if we're using the online editor, it actually creates the schema for us. Okay, I'll get rid of these tags and I will paste in my code. All right. Wait. So if I hit save on that, we should get the exact same result over here, which we do. But instead of, well, All right, so let me add this to to here because they're doing it on the um, the web IED and we're doing it and VS Code because VS Code is amazing. Um, but we're just gonna say over here, this is a section and in all caps and it's very scary. Yeah, okay, cool. So we did that. In we did that right well in addition to mm -hmm. taking mm -hmm. the theme color what i want to do is have a another option within the actual section data so what i'm going to do here open up that array and i'm going to have a checkbox here for a true or false value and what i'm going to do for this example is have an option to hide sold out products so the type that's cool so um, I have to go ahead and generate a schema, uh, which I think is just, you know, those settings that you can make for any particular thing um, for the CMS. Let's see. That is wild. And schema. Is there, there's gotta be liquid autocomplete. There's gotta be, there's gotta be liquid autocomplete or, or, or Shopify autocomplete. Do he, he, do people like Discord or Slack better? I love Slack though, but Discord is honestly at least was a little bit more accessible for me um, when coding. One of the projects I want to do on this channel is like make a Discord bot, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. It's going to be a checkbox. Label is required. ID will be something descriptive like show sold out and then the label which is what gets shown to the user is show sold out products do we want a deep I'm very default value let's do default, default false so we can see it working straight away all right, so I hit save on that. If I haven't made any errors in my schema, it should be fine, which it is. 
and I'm going to add this conditional in. So if the product is unavailable, show sold out. But what I'm gonna do is above here, do an if statement, close that if straight away so I don't forget it. And from here, I can access the data within the section schema by using the section object and then going into the settings attribute within that. And then- Interesting. I don't know if Big Cartel allowed you to do that, where you're able to like go in and, and make custom. I think you were able to, but I can't remember. I cannot remember for the life of me. Ooh, ooh. I haven't touched Big Cartel in a while, and unfortunately, like, I think you have to be paying for a theme. You have to be paying for something before you can actually edit the CSS and do liquid stuff, which uh, kind of stinks. Because you want to just be able to get something going and test some stuff before you're handing it off to a client. Client, 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 client. There we go. Get over there. Get over there. Section name. Uh, what's the complete object? Uh, it's if settings. Um, dot. So sold out. There we go. I like that that's responsive. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's so and cool to me. To access the attribute within the section settings. All right. So it's called show sold out. So we've got if section dot settings show sold out. This doesn't make sense just yet because we have to combine it with the conditional for product available. So I think in this instance, it's gonna make more sense to use unless, because most of the time it's gonna be false. So unless section dot settings show sold out is false. And so this is how we actually string together uh, conditional statements or comparison statements in Shopify liquid. We use and or or, pretty easy. And so we want, unless section settings dot sold out is false. So we don't want to show sold out products and the product available is not true. So it is sold out. Then we'll show the product. So just to. Oh, excuse me. Okay. So. And collection is available. It's not true. And then we can go ahead and update this. Which I think should still work. Okay, let me see the conditional. To summarize this let's break it up and oh it says if unless this is false and the product isn't available the two lines so if they've got show sold out as true so it doesn't then matter we're just going to show every product true. but if show sold out is false and the product is not available then we don't want to show it so that's why we have this unless here unless. I hit save refresh the page then nothing has changed yet. And that's because we need to actually go in here, refresh our customizer and switch that setting. So now you can see we've got 
tabs in our customizer. So we've got our theme settings, which we had before over here, but we also have section settings because we move this code into a section. And of course, every section has a schema. So now we can go in here and we click show sold out products. So obviously I've made a mistake here and this is actually hiding sold out products. So I'm just gonna change the wording of that. Instead of show, I'm gonna put hide sold out products. Hit save on that. Refresh the customizer to show that the label has changed. And now if we click the checkbox for hide sold out products, you'll see that that product with no image and no stock product that is indeed sold out will hide. And if we hit save on that, go over to our preview over here, you'll see that change has taken effect. Oh crap, I just realized I might have to roll back a uh, commit. Um... <laughs> yeah, I have to roll back a commit fudge. Uh, yeah, let me just... Okay, so what I'm gonna do is once we're done with the video, I'll com I will save and then I will... I have to uncommit all the files and then recommit them. It should be fine. All right, so now we've seen the basic syntax of Shopify Liquid, we've mm -hmm. incorporated store data, and we've combined that with theme data. <laughs> this is basically the full range of what you can do in Shopify Liquid. Now, of course, there's so many other filters and tags and objects that we could use, and we can't get into all of that in this video, but essentially, if you take what you've learned here and you use the documentation, read this blog post, you'll be able to apply the concepts that you've learned here to manipulating any object or using any different kind of filter. What I wanna finish on for this tutorial is I wanna talk about two things actually, scope and the limitations of this Shopify language. All right, so what do I mean by scope? Okay, so right now we just went on the index template, right? And I was able to grab a collection by referencing that specific collection. But what we have in Shopify and is essential for Shopify themes are templates. So when you view a certain collection in a Shopify store, it's gonna show the same layout, but just with different products based on what's in that collection. If you go to a certain blog post page in a Shopify store, you will see the same layout as every other blog post page in that Shopify store, but with the content of that specific blog post, all right? And so that's why you have these templates. So for instance, if we click on awesome sneakers here, we go to product. And again, it has gone back to the live theme. So I'll just preview again and bring it in. So if I click on the first product here, you'll see we have the title, the images, the description, the variant information. If we click on another product, you'll see it's all laid out the same way, but the difference is the actual product. The product information changes, but the layout and the presentation stays oh the same. And that is because it's all using the same template. Now, the reason why I mentioned this is because as we did here, we targeted a specific collection, but most of the time you're going to want to edit the collection template and have the URL or what the user clicks on determine what collection is in use. So if we go to the actual collection template here, we can see an example. It's just grabbing this collection object, which we didn't specify ourselves, but is specified by what the user clicks on and ultimately by the URL. So for instance, the variant information, if we click on another product, you'll see it's all laid out, the product information changes, but the layout and the presentation stays the same. And that is because it's all using the same template. Now, the reason why I mentioned this is because as we did here, we targeted a specific collection, but most of the time, you're going to want to edit the collection template and have the URL or what the user clicks on 
determine what collection is in use. So if we go to the actual collection template here, we can see an example. It's just grabbing this collection object, which we didn't specify ourselves, but is specified by what the user clicks on and ultimately by the URL. So for instance, with product, this is the same code that gets run every time you look at a product, right? So if we just go to a product page now, you'll see that we've got a H1 with the product title right there. We've got the form, which is right there. And we've, oh sorry, which is right here below the title. And then we've got the product description in a div, all right? And that doesn't change for any other product. What changes is the store data that it's bringing in. So the actual product object in this instance is whatever object, whatever product you're looking at. All right, so you can actually determine that. And unfortunately I can't see in that example there, but here's the full URL. It's products or some sneakers. So if we look at the URL structure, we can see that we're loading in the products template and then we're using the handle of that product and that's going to be the actual object that is product in this product template all right so if we go to another product as i showed you before and we grab that url everything stays the same except the part on the end and then so now the product object becomes the black leather bag rather than the awesome sneakers all right so I hope that concept makes sense. It's it imperative that you understand that if you're gonna do Shopify theme programming, should be pretty easy to understand uh, once you you know, get familiar with Shopify. The final thing that I wanna talk about, and this is something I discussed in the advanced liquid patterns uh, lesson of my Shopify theme programming course is the limitations of the language. So I'm going to get rid of this window here because we don't need it and i'm going to paste in the paragraph that i wrote in that particular lesson okay so here are some limitations of shopify liquid let me just increase the screen size okay so as i mentioned at the start liquid can be thought of as a programming language but it's just a templating language so what that means is you can't do certain things that you would do in a programming language in liquid for instance you can't create objects in liquid you can only use the objects that liquid makes available to you and you can't loop through certain objects that you would expect to be able to loop through even that makes sense like for instance you can't loop through all the articles in your Shopify website you would have to go into a particular blog first and then loop through its articles all right you can't create your own functions the filters available are the filters available. You can't actually make your own filters. Um, and certain other things like Booleans, you can't assign an actual comparison. So like I said, this is all covered in the advanced liquid lesson within my Skillshare class. But the reason why I wanted to include this particular information is to bring home the idea that really Shopify liquid is basically what we've learned here today. The main things you're gonna be using time and time again are loops, conditionals, uh, assignment. There really isn't a whole lot to the language and we can't create objects. We can't create our own functions. So whenever you're lost in Shopify Liquid, all you need to do is look up the documentation. I've got the link to the documentation within the blog post right here. And you can see the three types of syntax, objects, tags, filters. You can learn about the basics here and really everything that the programming language or I should say the templating language can do is right here. All right, guys, that's it for the tutorial here on Shopify Liquid. If you liked the video, so let me that know, really hit video. that like button and tell me what you liked or didn't like. That was a good video. Let me make sure everything's saved so I can actually revert this. Your local changes to the following files will be overridden. Please permit your changes or status them before you merge.
I'm just gonna say add section. And I spelled section wrong. So kind of commit. And then we're gonna revert this commit. I think it happened. Yeah, it did. So everything did do bleed it. Okay, so we're not gonna revert. Um, Oh my gosh. Well, that information is going to be there. Let me think. So if this. Let me see how I how I destroyed the uh, final. And now I got a pull because I just made a change on GitHub. This isn't how ho ho oh. Yes, I destroyed the page, but I think that's good for right now. Oh. I'll just change the um Just delete the store. Oh, you can't delete stores. I guess you can archive them.
So I just went ahead and just deleted the, the private app. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna be it for today for the most part. Uh, I wanna do this again. I might start designing tomorrow what I want the site that I wanna make to look like, but I need to find what the site looks like first. And I got my commit in, I got my daily commit in, so. Yeah. Very good stuff. Very good stuff. What time is it? Uh, we've been streaming for about de hours. De two dos. It's cool, cool, cool. I didn't mean to go on GitHub. Was it them? Oh, let me check my phone. I guess I took a picture of it. I need to figure out which brand did that. It did the thing. Who did the thing? Who did the thing? Who did the thing? I can't figure out who did the thing. Also had an idea for a design thingy. Okay. I didn't save it. Yeah. Unless it was just deep in here, I saw it. I thought it was cool and then just didn't do anything else afterwards, which is possible.
Dog, what, 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 why did I say that? I didn't say that. Oh, I did. Okay, cool. I was getting sad for a second because I really liked what this looked like. And I'll show it to you all in a second. If I can find the design inspo. Unless they took it down. Oh, no. Is, did they take it down? Okay, they didn't. But I also can't go to the, the right. So, this is the the site um oh my goodness but um it's 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 cool it looks cool i'm gonna design it so what we're gonna do for the next stream which might be tomorrow probably um is going to be i will start designing on stream what it's gonna look like uh in the end because it's probably a bunch of different parts and um, I don't want to just like completely just straight up copy. I want to change a couple of things, use different typefaces and whatnot. Potentially I can make it different enough where it's open source. So yeah, um, the get ignore is here. Um, I didn't make any changes, so. All right. So yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and after this stream, I actually have to download both of the streams, merge them and then re-upload it. And then um, figure out what, at some point I have to figure out what the content of the description is gonna be. I kind of have an idea for thumbnails for streams, which is good. And, um, Yeah, then we'll just do, we'll do the designing part next stream. Um, so folks can see how I sort of, my process in designing or, or copying um, is. And then um, we will, at, I guess at the end, actually code it, have it working. And then that will be, that we'll be able to see how long it takes for the whole process. We'll be able to see like what boilerplates can be used to make things you know faster in the future um yeah just a, we'll be able to just go through the whole process of a shopify site and store and figure out what a uh, what a client would need once they actually get in a lot of the projects that i'm making will you know they're usually going to be for me um or I'm thinking about a client. Usually stuff that I am i haven't really messed with extensively is probably gonna be for client potentially if I don't have a personal use for it. But a lot of the times what will happen is um, I've been in the same position as some of the creatives that I want to start working with and for, and I just identify the problems that I have. Like a big thing with like um, musicians is uh, having a steady stream of content. Um, which is a problem that I want to solve. Like, I just see a lot of independent musicians um, not really heavily promoting themselves. I mean, you can as a brand, right, on Instagram and everything, but, you know, thinking about how do you survive when you're not signed by a label, which is more or less like a nine to, the nine to five of, of, a, of a, I guess, the musician industry, um, or, you know, how, like, how do you, how do you make sure that people are paying attention to your music? If your music is good, like how do you find your audience and how do you build that audience? And I think that's a, a problem that I see often is like, you'll see artists that are good, but you know, for some reason it's not reaching and it's just this nebulous thing of like, what's not working. And honestly, I think it's something that can be helped or solved with a little bit of money and code. Um, but obviously, you know, 
labels definitely have more power when it comes to being able to take an artist um, and their brand and putting it out there and making sure everyone sees it. And part of that is like being able to go to to um, press junkets, press outlets, and just being like, hey, we have an artist. Talk about them, please. Review their stuff, please. Um, so yeah. Um, if anyone's watching this at any point in the future, uh, feel free to connect with me. The link's below, or just to ask questions or comments or whatever. Feel free to talk. Um, if people want in the future, I could see myself making a Discord, um, and we can all do code stuff or business stuff, code business stuff. Um, I'm definitely looking for a full-time job, but I think I also want to do freelance as well at the same time because I've, I've done it before. I've made sites for people and I like the process. I like the process of making these sites for folks. Um, but you know, just sort of, oh, that's an idea. I have an idea. I'm going to write it down. Um, lessons from freelancing. So I've, I've done a, a couple of projects freelancing over the years since 2016, but um, there's definitely things that I would change in the future because uh, I've, I've had some uh, very epic fails when it comes to actually making sure that the process is really smooth. Like, and th that's on me and that's that's why I feel like those lessons could be really powerful for folks. And also, the big thing for me that I'm having an issue with is definitely want to prove to people that I can make things, you know. And I think that's the the process of making a portfolio and and making videos and and connecting with people. But um, the connecting to people has been hard as well. Like um, when I've announced that I code, people know that I code. I've coded, but it's never an ongoing stream. Um, and I definitely want to target folks over the internet, but I know it's a lot easier if you're physically present with folks. So that's also something that I'm thinking about. But yeah, this uh, channel is gonna be for people who are aspiring developers, developers already um, want to be freelance coders or creative so code or uh, people who want a part-time or full-time job. Um, I'm gonna be talking about a lot of aspects of development and I guess business. Um, and potentially content creation, but yeah. Um, also, thank you, Elias, for being here and watching, or just chilling. You know, um, I think I'll try to be here around this time tomorrow. We'll see. Um, but the fact that like I can basically document my learning is pretty cool because I was I've been wanting to do Shopify for a while. What else do I have here? I like Swift UI is on here. So, oh my gosh, like learning the stuff and like applying it's gonna be so cool. So yes, thank you very much for watching or chilling if you did.